hello students and uh, welcome back to my channel let's learn together i hope all of you are doing really really fine i also hope that all of you are enjoying your life to the maximum uh well in today's video what i'm trying to do is that uh, i'm going to as you know that this is the second part of the video that i uploaded on the chapter the enemy this is going to be part two so the concerns over there was that i discussed the summary of the chapter with you along with certain other concerns but now in this particular video i'm going to talk to you in detail about the character sketch of certain characters here and along with what are the other major concerns or major other issues which the chapter highlights or which the story highlights as i had told you in the first uh, video i i tried to give you a kind of background between uh, you know the relationship between america and japan at the time of second world war wherein i had tried my best to trace the history way back from 1800s of from the late 19th century to the early 20th century uh, and we had seen about how japan was developing as a very ambitious nature and it wanted to gain uh, military and economical and the social supremacy over the other western countries like britain france and especially america so it did many things uh, you know to gain that kind of um, a supremacy and it started attacking most of its neighbor countries uh, in order to get hold of the resources which were important to uh, make uh, their country more uh, important make their country uh, more valuable right so uh, this is how the basic environment that exists between america and japan at the time when this particular story is being written or the time of the story is basically set in somewhere in second world war wherein the relationship between Japan and America was not really good because they had been through the Pacific War, and especially after uh, the, especially after uh, the Pearl Harbor attack, the relationships between them had really really sad. So America had decided to take revenge upon Japan, and it just could could not want. Uh, did not want Japan to grow as a uh, important power as an important Asian power. right so now i think this must be clear to you that there was this very deep level of rivalry that existed between japan and um uh, japan and america so when we listen about or when we read about uh, how tom the american prisoner of war was found by sadao and by his wife at that time you you could understand how sadai sadao would have responded to the whole situation okay and if you have read the text properly at that time he calls uh, this american pow as his enemy and he says that he is my enemy and i must not do anything to save him but then his character as a doctor supersedes and then he decides to at least bring him back to his senses before actually handing over hand, hand him over to the police and the local authorities right so this has how uh, you know um, uh, the relationship between sadao and american pow is something which gets very largely decided by the equations that their respective countries share with each other so what i intend to do is today that i intend to do the character sketch of three characters dr sadao hoki his wife hana and general the american general uh, sorry the japanese general and then i will also discuss with you the important other issues which the which the story basically highlights so we shall first begin with the the characterizations of the characters and i will definitely first begin with the major character or the protagonist of the story dr sadao hoki so when we talk about dr sadao hoki or uh, you know what actually image pops up into your mind when you think about him so the only word which basically comes into our mind when you think about him is perfect that he is perfect in almost all aspects of his life so he has been a very perfect son he has been a very good medical student he has been a very perfect surgeon and a scientist he is probably one of the best doctors of his country and so much so that actually the Amer the japanese general has decided to make him stay back in the country when all other soldiers have actually moved out or doctors probably have moved out with the troops for the war sadao had been staying back in the country because at any point the japanese general might just uh, uh, might just be in a requirement of getting operated and for that the best doctor is actually being saved for that right 
and at the same time he is a good patriotic he is a perfect patriotic because he has completely imbibed and you know absorbed the values that has been transferred to him by his father sadao's father was uh, once again a very deep japanese he was you know from the very deepest core of his heart he had a uh, valued japanese traditions and this is something that he had actually transferred uh, directly to his own son and he wanted japan uh, to grow as a nation and which was actually the sentiment of every japanese at that time as i told you that you know japan was coming to be a very uh, ambitious nature uh, of very ambitious nation so what happened at that time that you know right in the beginning of the chapter if you read the story uh, sadao's father whose house is situated on a seashore he just stands over the rocks and look at the waters and he says that you know these islands are going to have a fabulous uh, future and uh, who is uh, uh, basically responsible for taking the country towards that glorious path are nothing but japanese and therefore these are the values which sadao hoki has grown up believing in and he knows that his contribution for his country and his society is extremely important he feels himself responsible for ensuring that japan progress right so that's what i'm saying that he is a very fundamental very traditionalist at heart when it comes to being a, a citizen of his country and he has totally imbibed all those values that has been given to him by his father he has grown up listening to them he has grown up uh believing in them and when he was 22 years of old uh, of age he had to go to america to pursue his further studies in medical medicine and at that time also now once again you see that he is going to enemy country to educate himself but then he goes over there because he wants to educate himself well come back and serve back in his own country so that he could contribute positively towards his own nation so there he finds hana Hana is going to be now his future wife and he falls in love with him but then he he does he ensures that you know he does not take any impulsive decision of marrying Hana and he decides that he and Hana both are able to fall into the situation uh, very deeply and very seriously so he interrogates even his feelings towards Hana quite uh, deeply and uh, and there's this uh, you know this whole uh, intersection or this whole uh, whole idea of uh, trying to know about his feeling very deeply was only that has sprung up from the very basic feeling that he should not even accidentally hurt the feeling of his father who probably would not have easily accepted a american daughter in law so you know what the reasons are because she obviously belongs to uh, 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 an enemy nation but then she had he had given time hana to become complete japanese uh, what does that mean of course she could not change herself uh, as far as her physicality was concerned she looked american and uh, but then at least she could change her ideas and uh, she, by the time uh, if if she has accepted japan within her bloods and veins actually she had gone down to the very deeper level of understanding and you know loving japan from within until that time sadao does not actually marry her so what i'm trying to get at is that sadao is is has been a good son he has been a good citizen he has been a very good medical student now a scientist also and the best surgeon in the country at the same time he has also been japanese right uh, from within his heart so uh, sadao hoki is in that way a complete perfect personality one can if, at any time uh, you know imagine and he is a perfect idealist but the problem occurs when he meets this american pow when he meets the american pow now the first dilemma was whether to send him back into the push him back into the waters but then there you find that his identity as a doctor supersedes and he decides to take him back into the home and at least try to bring him back to his senses but even after doing that you know there is this transformation you must understand that there is this transformation in sadao's character from being a very traditional japanese to Uh, to into becoming a very um, into becoming a very uh, liberal human being but this transformation does not happen overnight this happens in bits and pieces this happens in in small steps so the first step is that when he somehow overcome his urge to push him back into the water 
when you remember he he finds that american pewter blue washed ashore near his house he and sana had decided to put him back into the water but then they stop and they think about it and they decides to take them back to the home and to try to tend him at least so that he could basically you know get down to the level of coming back to his senses and then he could be handed over to police so that is one thing next important thing is after bringing him back to the homes when you remember if you remember that hana had also uh, you know uh, had actually declined to wash him because he was white plus he was just too dirty at that time so then he had asked the servants of the home yumi uh, in particular and also the old gardener to help her washing uh, in the uh, washing the old uh, washing the american prisoner of war at that time the servant had declined this requ the request of their masters because uh, they knew the obvious consequence of it because if anybody get to know that they had basically been sheltering an american pewter blue obviously the results are going to be disastrous so what happens is that now that the servants had uh, uh, refused to do this uh, hana and sadao decides to tend them personally tend him personally and they uh, take care of the american pewter personally both of them uh, you know starts washing and uh, you know cleaning his wounds and 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 starts giving him medication and things like that so that is another step now what happens is that sadao after certain while after after operating him after you know performing an operation about him he feels that now that he is uh, to a certain extent improving uh, um, he must be now handed over to the army so he goes to the army general when uh, he has been summoned by army general as he has some some physical ailment because for which sadao has been summoned by the japanese general he goes there and he informs everything to the japanese general till this point he is acting as a very um, you know as a very um, traditional japanese and a very um, a uh, deep uh, patriot so he goes there and he asks him that uh, you know that, he, that 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 there is this american pewter blue in their home and what should be done about him and the uh, and the general says that he has his own personal assassins so he would just send them to him and sadao should keep one of the doors of his uh, backyard open so that the person the american pewter blue would be uh, very easily killed off and then the body would be disposed of so he comes back uh, with a certain relief that now he's going to get rid of him but at the same time he also feels bad because he has just you know planned a murder right so yes there is a burden in his heart and uh, he feels very burdened with at the thought of uh, you know this murder that would take place so here you find that this humanity within him is now slowly and steadily it's awakening okay and now it is it, it is trying to uh, it is trying to give rise within sadao a larger concerns of humanity now he is to a certain extent becoming more sensitive to the issues about what is more important should we only act as a japanese and an american and only look at human relationships from the point of view that basically the government of a particular country imposes upon the uh, citizen especially at the time of war or is it that one should be able to take decisions on his or her own and understand what is right and what is wrong for overall human kind so these are the issues that have started taking place that they have started you know taking birth in his heart now he is becoming more sensitive to these issues so that's what i'm saying that transformation of sadao from being a very dutiful citizen to a perfect human being thinking only for human kind takes place this transformation takes place in bits and pieces and in steps so after a few days when the assassins do not appear in the home he realizes that something wrong has happened with uh, with the general and he decides that you know he would basically uh, allow him to leave the country safely so he prepares a boat for him and then something to eat few um, sets of clothes maybe the the, the the japanese clothes and a flashlight and he allows him to leave secretly in the night so that he could just leave the country and be safe at least with his life so that he is able to you know at least save his life 
Now, if you look at it from the government's point of view, this is the definitely the characteristics of being a traitor. And if the government of the Japan gets to know about Sadao's act, then definitely he will be put in trial and the, the punishment of the trial is going to be just a death sentence or maybe a life imp imprisonment. He will be completely ripped from his uh, from the kind of uh, reputation that he has enjoyed so far in the country and in, in his community. At the same time, he would also be uh, you know uh, he would he, he might just end up losing his life and uh, this will completely destroy his family but even after knowing this Sadao does that because he now understand what is more important just following or just adopting the national values or the values of humankind or, or working in favor of the humankind because at the end of the day we all are human beings right so Sadao decides to rise above these petty ideas of nationalism and he he decides to work or he decides to take up the actions in favor of humankind which makes him yet another you know exceptional character so this exceptionality in his character is added because of his nature of how he analyzed things okay he has not been actually uh, facing this idea this this crisis ever before but in the face of crisis he is able to understand what should be right and what should be wrong and he is able to rise above as i told you the popular sentiments of a nation and the popular sentiments of the nation are the patriotism the, the one that are related to patriotism that you need to align to yourself to the country uh, irrespective of what happens right so that is how you, uh, you know sadao is basically being described so i, I see him as a perfect person a perfect Japanese, a perfect husband, a very perfect husband, uh, loving his wife, perfect son who has always followed his father's values and ideas, a perfect father, maybe a perfect doctor. And but then he is also, you know, transforming in him. There is this very important transformation in his character that takes place throughout the story, and you find about how he grows in the face of this crisis. So uh, most of the people, when they are faced with crisis, would definitely, uh, you know, we, we generally tend to pick up the safer option for ourselves, you know, to save our lives and dignities and, and reputations. But then why I'm ca calling him an exceptional character is that he decided to take up an option uh, which had a lot of risk in it. But then he knew what was right, what was wrong, and he decides to work in accordance with humankind and not... Um, you know he uh, and not just as a Japanese so he had this ability to transform himself or to move over the concerns that has just been uh, induced in him right from the very beginning of his life so this is how you have to you can add some more points also to his character if you have been able to observe any but only thing is that as you talk about the personality traits you have to ensure that you pick up the instances from the book you pick up the examples from the story in order to substantiate your point that is important okay let us move on to the next character which is hana now hana is as i told you he is of course sadao's wife american by origin and he had fallen sorry she had fallen in love when both of them were in college and they had met at a uh, professor's party from there he, he she probably realizes that you know that she is in love with Sadao and she would want to spend rest of her life um, with him. Uh, now you must understand that uh, Hana would obviously be uh, completely aware of the obvious consequences of marrying a person from her enemy nation but then she decides to move on so you can uh, try to understand the extent uh, to which she had fallen in love with Sadao. Right? She comes out as a very dutiful wife. She is a very dutiful wife. Uh, which means that she would definitely stand by her husband almost uh, all the times, even in the odd times also. So she is not somebody who could very easily question back Sadao. Uh, there is uh, the, in her character, I, I find a very I find um, a kind of submissiveness, but not in a negative way. Uh, this submissiveness is basically the consequence of the love that they had shared with each other uh, at the same time there's this uh, she's you know quickly driven by this sense of love and which has actually given um, then rise to a sense of duty so there is all these things which are interlinked with each other so since she is so much in love with Sadao she has decided to imbibe Japanese as her new identity 
that is something that is extremely important when you look at Hana's character. Hana is a Western girl who could have very easily come out with a solution, uh, with an option of not, uh, you know, becoming Japanese. But then uh, she shifts to Japan. But at the same time, more than that, what is important is that she has completely imbibed the Japanese values, as uh, Sadao would expect her to, and uh, that is uh, this, you know, this this absorption of uh, Japanese value has basically only to gain acceptance in in Sadao's life, in Sadao's heart, and at the same time in Japanese country also, uh, in, in the Japanese uh, community also. So it is as if she has totally and hundred percently uh, allowed herself to become Japanese deep within her thoughts also. So when she looks at the American, uh, that very you know shift reminds her of her origins but at the same time there is this thread of hatred that occurs into her mind also because she has also started consider considering americans uh, as her enemies like other japanese uh, and uh, she also feels that you know they are in a way inviting danger by saving this american so you can understand that there is this complete uh, absorption and this complete inclusion of Japanese values and uh, although a lot of things are not clear but one can imagine uh, that uh, maybe uh, you know she would not very often uh, follow or display her American values in uh, after becoming wife of Sada and uh, she has totally uh, totally um, kind of surrendered before her new identity and uh, she has uh, you know the way she dresses herself is also uh, Japanese but the way she thinks is also Japanese the way she has been running her life is also Japanese so this is something which I feel is the most prominent part of her character that the the, the sheer ease with which she has adopted this new identity is something which is which could only be the result of intense love and intense longing to be with someone which is not easy to come so at one side if I'm not glorifying her character that all women should do it uh, in order to find love but at the same time you must understand that the kind of flexibility uh, Shada, uh, this Hana's character has displayed is just immense and it is of course exceptional so this is how a Sadao and Hana has been uh, you know they have loved and they have loved each other uh, just uh, uh, outgrowing the national boundaries and it, it which is of course of extremely uh, uh, you know this is praiseworthy and at the same time you find amazed uh, this this whole idea this relationship quite amazing because uh, you do not find even a tinge of you know this arrogancy within them or there is this even not even a, the slightest tinge of this feeling of the fact that they both belong to different uh, national backgrounds so they have just loved each other for the kind of individuals they have been and it uh, and they have not allowed uh, this national identity or their difference uh, this asian and american backgrounds this difference between this background enter into the relationship so such intense has been their bonding so yes hana has been uh, she should be seen as a very dutiful wife she should be seen as a very good lover and at the same time a good mother who has completely imbibed the japanese value you can add once again i would say you can add more to the character of hana well moving on let us look at the americans uh, sorry let us look at japanese general's character so japanese general's character when you look at it you know that uh, you know there there has been there very this mention of how uh, uh, he had been quite violent towards uh, his own wife and at the same time he has also been violent and uh, very brutal in dealing with uh, the POWs, with the prisoner of wars, basically. So, uh, when you think about general, what appears into his mind is this very cruel person who is who probably gets some kind of sadistic pleasure in um, in killing and inflicting uh, violence on others, and uh, from there he derives his power, maybe, and he feels more powerful when he is able to. Uh, you know suppress people so uh, the fact that he is uh, he uh, is a abuser to his own wife 
is is definitely a very negative shade of his character at the same time you find him as somebody who is a very complete fundamentalist when it comes in believing the values uh, of um, you know the, the the nationalist values by saying that he was a fundamentalist fundamentalist i want to say that he is somebody who would never questions uh, any ideas going against his own countries so he knows that in order to um uh, you know uh, in order to become a superpower in the world certain policies needs to be adopted and these policies are often inhumane but uh, no matter what even if he has to kill thousands and thousands of people just in order to make his own character more glorified then he would uh, definitely go with it so there is this lack of humanism in this in his character and at the same time Uh, it is not just one character uh, but then there are variety of people in army uh, who just enjoy the whole aura that has been given to them in before the civilians of the country uh, by you know uh, by by making their character look like as if they're larger than life since they can uh, kill thousands of people just in order to save the dignity of the country but at the same time when you pull off the layers of the characters you realize the sheer brutality in their character and the violence in their character okay so uh, general then comes out to be as a very violent fundamentalist uh, person and at the same time you know that he has his own assassins he has his own private assassins and why does a, 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 an army officer needs to keep his own private assassins so that he can could kill anyone at any time which is also an example of how aggressive he is so he is just not tolerant of any kind of deviation from the set ideas he is just not tolerant of it if he finds any a uh, deviation any person deviating from them then then he will be the first one to get them killed and uh, get them removed from his path so he is quite sure about how to deal with people and for him killing and murdering people is not uh, something which will um, which will has which 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 will have any kind of moral um, implications so he has outgrown those moral in, implications so and at the same time you know you you find him as a person who is extremely careless also to a certain extent because he forgets to send those assassins at uh, sadao's home which is quite uh, selfish and it is quite careless of him because killing for him then you you can imagine is so casual that he can actually forget about him about it so he is yes to a certain extent careless and selfish also because he wants the hoki to be stayed back in country so that you know he can have the best doctors of the country to attend his personal health right so this is how i have uh, tried to see these characters as uh, you have your own way of looking at them and you can come up with your own answers provided you are able to substantiate your point by picking up instances by quoting examples from the story right in the next part what i'm trying to do now is that i'm trying to look at the larger concerns of the story about what is it that story the basic ideas upon which the story is built upon what is it that that you know the writer is trying to convey to us so when you read any story you must understand that the writer's intention is not only to 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 create certain situations and to put certain characters in the situations and you know show you about how this particular characters act and behave in those situations there are some very deeper and important messages that this story is carry which you need to understand okay so let us for example understand that you know you have a country which is at war and this war is not a small war it's it's a world war situation which is happening at that time what happens or how does a country behave at the face of war this is what basically the writer is trying to do this is first and foremost the concern of the right you tell you about what generally happens when a country is at war right how does it behave so if you uh, understand the story uh, well you know that uh, you know there are certain ideas in uh, which gets popularized there are certain sentiments which would get popularized uh, by the government of the country or by the ruling party of the country uh, especially in the face of a crisis and the crisis is nothing less than a war and these values are these values are the uh, nationalist values about how you should be seeing your country and how is it that you know each and every person cannot go on to the border and fight that is not possible but each and every citizen of this country can definitely contribute towards the war by thinking only about his own country 
by becoming patriotic in his attitude in his or her attitude and by following and imbibing the nationalist value that has been popularized by the government you must understand at that time the government will not allow you to think against the country which means whatever sadao does sadao decides to save this american from the clutches of japanese army from the clutches of japanese uh, police he is actually doing a anti national act now this could very well this whole incident was enough to make him prove a traitor which could eventually take him towards his death so now you understand that certain values the values of hating the citizens of other countries these kind of values these kind of ideas are been popularized in a country by the government and anybody who does not follow these ideas can be very easily put to death in the name of patriotism in the name of saving their country in the name of glorifying their country so when a country is in war certain values are basically glorified and these values become so important for the national or for the citizens that if they do not follow them then what happens is that these people are seen as traitors okay there is uh this glorification of the values uh, which are often dehumanizing in nature which are often dehumanizing in nature because these values are something that you know basically built upon uh in respecting uh, their countries from the innermost core of their heart and uh, disrespecting the other nations okay so you may you, you must understand that in a war you know a country does not only value his or her own um, values or his or her own ideas but it is very specifically has got to do with hating so there is this a lot of inducement of hate at such time a lot of uh, uh, you know the teachers to hate the teachers to be jealous of other people the people of the special uh, this uh, um animation that he just to compete with the nation for almost no reason that's what i said that they they are very dehumanizing values which are often glorified and there is absolutely no tolerance of any kind of differences of opinions which should be easily granted by government to a citizen which means that they actually in a very subtle way attack the individual freedom of their citizens also so when a gov you know country is at war the government does not only uh, you know face a war with a uh, um, with a with a enemy nation but there is this kind of conflict which which is created or or they are also at a mental level at a emotional level at a psychological level at a psychological level is also at war with their own people with their own citizens um, by not allowing them to to have a freedom of uh, uh, you know of 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 thinking freely they cannot think freely they have to think whatever the government is popularizing so certain national sentiment is popularized and glorified and that becomes the popular sentiment because everybody aligns with that whereas most of the people aligns with that there could be a small population who might be critical enough analytical enough to understand uh the intentions of government and such people are very easily put to death as i told now that brings me to my next point because when i'm saying that they are put to death it means that there are political killings that happens in a country and these political killings are not just restricted to the pows or the prisoners of war but the political killings are also of those people who does not or who do not you know uh, those people who who just they they who do not align themselves with the national values they very easily put to death and such political killings are legalized these political killings are legalized because the biggest justification that has been given is that everything is done to save the honor of a country so in the name of saving the honor of the country killings are legalized killings are carried out first of all in any civilized country a murder will has to be you know taken to the court and and the person involved with it or the suspects involved in it would be would have to face a trial whereas in the face of war nothing of that sort happens so if for example just imagine sadao would have actually been caught uh while saving 
this american then what would have happened sadao would have had to face instant instant death sentence that is a very big possibility if not uh, and if not a death sentence then definitely a life imprisonment to the extent of losing his family and of course his wife and his children would also suffer for the whole of the time whole of the life time so what i'm trying to get at is that you know sadao's whole idea of uh, of a saving or of uh, allowing this american to escape from the country was very much an anti nationalist idea because it was not in alignment with whatever the government was saying at that time therefore indirectly uh, or directly the personal freedom of each and every individual is just taken away and you are required to hate the nationals of you know enemy nation and uh, therefore uh, this is how a country generally behaves in the face of war right so this according to me have been some important uh, issues that the story has raised one very important issue is that story has also you know i would say a very revolutionary idea that the story has given or something in uh, you know the way that story should be termed as radical i feel is that uh, that uh, you know the writer is giving us the possibility of choosing humanity over nationality now that is important that is important because these ideas are just not accepted uh, by the governments uh, if you just uh, understand uh, how the ra rise of nazism and fascism nazism happened in germany and fascism happened in italy uh, so what was this uh, anybody who did not belong bel uh, you know who did not uh, fell into the category of national you know uh, nationals according to the government they were simply put to death and thousands and thousands of people were killed in concentration camps at that time at the time of almost second world war when germany Germ germany's nazist government had put its a lot of people to death a lot of people to death actually and the same kind of things under mussolini's government happened uh, in italy also so here you find a writer who is who is radical enough to voice uh, or, or to give you an option uh, between what is right and what is wrong and this requires a great deal of strength and courage as uh, sadao has been able to show so yes there is one important issue that i must also um, you know discuss about how was it you know there might be questions in cbc about how was it first of all the question is what was the dilemma that sadao hoki faced so that is not a difficult question to answer because you know that the dilemma was of that being a japanese first of all and then of that being a human being so what does he choose his identity as a japanese which will not allow him to save america but then his identity as being a human being which would require him to help yet another human being right so he understand that the bond between american and japanese was that of the human kind which is the biggest one which is which should be which should never be ignored by people right so of course this is the dilemma because if he decides to help the american then he might just have to pay for the consequences or if if he just decides to go on work according to the japanese value then in that case the american would be killed and this is going to put him into a long life guilt this could very well put sadao into a long life guilt so the dilemma is between right and wrong between what is ethical and what is non ethical between what is moral and what is immoral right so then the question is next part of the question generally um, ask you to uh, talk about how is it that sadao is able to overcome this dilemma then you have to think about his belief and realization of higher human values so how is he able to overcome this dilemma he is able to overcome his dilemma you have to talk about it at two levels first level is that how he was very strategically able to work by first informing the japanese general about the presence of american and then taking advantage of the americ uh, the the general's uh, forgetfulness the fact that he is forget he has you know he had just forgot to send these people the assassins to his home he had been intelligent enough and strategic enough to take uh, advantage of this fact and then he had you know planned the escape plan for the american so of course he has 
he has been able to manipulate the situations well and then he goes to the general and he says that you know how this person has basically escaped away he has just run out of his home and he could not do anything about him so everything just fell into the place and he was able to manipulate the situations well you have to discuss about how he did all this and at the same time you also have to discuss that this uh, whole courage of you know going against the complete government had come with from within with a greater realization a greater realization uh, of you know believing in human values about how each human being should respect the existence of another human being and then how that country's wars country's fight for very petty reasons because you know you must derive your answer from the fact that japan was just trying to become militarily superior to most of the countries now what is said that his the japan for that better any country is going to achieve by becoming superior to others rather than becoming superior so rather than just gaining power the country must think about um you know thinking well of their own citizens the, the country should do something to give a good a meaningful life to its citizens but instead of that generally the nations are involved in a competition of becoming superpowers right now this has its own consequences there are variety of people many people young people who die or and and, and they lose their lives in war and most of their uh, the people who are not even you know the reasons of the uh, the death and the bodies are also not been obtained by the people by their own homes by the people at their homes they can't even get back the bodies of the people who who have just died so what i'm trying to say is that in the name of becoming superior to others we are inflicting brutally the violence on each other which which are again a very dehumanizing value so this is the realization that sadao understands this realization helps him to rise above the national values and this does not happen overnight this takes time as i've told you this happens in steps you know this happens one by one so this transformation is not sudden transformation but it happens slowly and it happens at a very deeper level right so this is what i had to talk to you about uh, this particular chapter if you have any doubts you need to get back to me with your questions in the comment sections thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you have enjoyed reading this chapter this is one of the most interesting chapter of his libus and um, read well and if you have still not read the chapter please read it again it is important for you to have read the chapter between the lines right from the first sentence to the last sentence i hope you enjoy reading this particular chapter and you enjoy reading literature at a whole thank you so much i hope you have a nice life ahead